Hi everyone. So our next project is going to focus on value. It is hands down the most important element uh, that you have in your kit, right? Uh, value is the start of everything. Uh, it is essentially the relationship of light and shadow, right? Uh, and without light, visual artists don't have anything, right? It is our, it is our ultimate medium. And value is the most critical way that we learn how to control that medium of light. So we're going to turn our attention to uh, the importance of value contrast. There's no greater contrast that we have at our disposal. Value range, which helps us set the mood for our works of art. And uh, for this project in particular, we're going to focus on recognizing a value pattern in the composition of a work of art. So we're going to take uh, an old black and white movie still, and we're going to break it down into five basic values. Uh, transfer it from a print to uh, a piece of Bristol board, or, or if you want to use watercolor paper or canvas, more power to you. Um, and then we're going to mix up five different shades of gray and fill in those different uh, value shapes um, that form that composition. Uh, so you're going to be looking for an image that has a range of values, a good deal of value contrast, uh, and a pattern of values that is interesting to the eye. That's our goal anyway. All right, so let's take a look at this, shall we? <clears throat> so um, the project sheet uh, is going to walk you through um, uh, just about everything that you need to know and probably more than you want to know. <laughs> but uh, it's, um, you know, got a list of materials, um, what you're expected to, to do, like preliminary uh, work, like research. Uh, in this case, you're going to find, um, it, you know, a few examples from, you know, old black and white feature films. Uh, you're going to save a screenshot from that film, and uh, you're going to show those to me first, right? I'd like to see what it is that you're looking at um, and try to figure out if there's, you know, a, a good enough value range, etc. Um, you're going to be the ultimate um, decision maker on, on what you use, but I want to see that you're looking and giving yourself options. So we're going to go find examples first, uh, take screenshots of them, and uh, turn those in. And then you're going to, uh, you know, choose the best one, uh, make a print from it, you know, just a, a cheap black and white laser print, or an inkjet print if you have an inkjet printer. Uh, just something on thin paper um, that we can use to transfer the image to our, our ground, our Bristol board, or, or panel, or canvas, what have you. Uh, and we're going to do this in acrylic paint. <clears throat> That's really important. Acrylic paint is going to give you more control over finding just the right value. Uh, you know, mixing um, is a lot easier with like a, a heavy body acrylic paint. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, <clears throat> ink or watercolor is going to be a little more difficult to control. All right. So, it's this is going to walk you through it step by step. We're going to go to the website archive.org. Uh, in fact, there's a link here in the handout uh, that'll take you right to it. Um, gonna, uh, again, take screenshots from feature films that you are interested in. Uh, we're going to take it into an image editing program. Um, Pixlr will do the job just fine. 
uh, although some of you uh, may uh, know Photoshop and prefer Photoshop and um, either way we do it we're going to output uh, that image uh, with five basic values I'll show you that in a minute uh, so we're going to you know essentially <clears throat> take the image uh, in its kind of uh, original state uh, make it a little more contrasty and then apply a filter to it called posterize that will break it down into those basic values right uh, once you make a print of that image at roughly 8 by 10, uh, you're going to um, basically uh, transfer it, either you like putting charcoal on the back side of it or uh, using carbon paper or transfer paper, um, whichever method you're essentially going to trace the image onto your ground, your, you know, your medium, your backing board. And once it's transferred, right, you're going to paint it. All right. Uh, and I would suggest that you be systematic about it. When you go to transfer the image to your backing board, I would start with all of the white shapes <laughs> transfer them uh, then move to the light gray shapes then the medium gray shapes then the dark gray then black and when you go to paint it it's probably going to be a good idea to be systematic about it again start with white uh, move to light gray middle gray dark gray black uh, some of you may go the other direction you might start with black and move towards white whichever way works for you. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to my hand cam here. So here's um, a cut paper version of what we're going to do. Ours is going to be in paint, but uh, some of my uh, previous uh, classes cut these shapes out of paper. We're going to use paint because um, it um, it's a good challenge for you learn how to uh, mix uh, paints and apply them control them so um, but essentially uh, what you're doing is taking a photograph and breaking it down into five basic values uh, to kind of emphasize them uh, so we're going from an open value image with soft transitions to a closed value image that has very clear shapes that define those values. Okay, so if um, you can um, uh, get your, like make yourself a print uh, from the image, I'm going to show you how to break it down uh, using that image editing software. You're going to print it uh, and then transfer it, right? Um, so, like, this is a film, an old film noir still. Uh, and here's another one, a, a sci-fi classic, Plan 9 from Outer Space. But, um, essentially, you're going to tape that print down to your, your backing board. In this case, I've got a piece of Bristol board, but you might use, you know, canvas paper or a canvas or, um, or illustration board, something like that. So, um, it's important to tape it down. Uh, it's also important to, like, mark, um, you know, uh, the corners of the piece to, um, you know, make sure that you can uh, get back in regi registration if for some reason uh, this gets removed too quickly or accidentally, you'll be able to, you know, get uh, your print back into position so you can continue to transfer it. So in a nutshell, what you're going to do is take, you know, something like a piece of vine charcoal, or even like a charcoal pencil, like the softer the better. And uh, you can uh, turn this thing over and and you know add some charcoal back here. 
And you, you can do this with soft graphite also. All right. Lay it on there. And then what I like to do is use a colored pencil uh, so I can differentiate it from the gray. Uh, but, you know, if you essentially uh, transfer by tracing over those shapes. And depending on what you use, like if, you, if you're using charcoal like this, you might have to, to like press, you know, m m like a moderate pressure to light pressure. I would start real soft and like only use as much um, pressure as you need to to transfer it because, you know, uh, you run the risk of this fouling your paint if you're not too careful. Charcoal is really good for this because you can like knock a lot of it off. Graphite's a little harder to get rid of. Um, and, and even harder to get rid of is carbon paper. You know, if you've got carbon paper or, or transfer paper, they make transfer papers just for artists. You know, that is really hard to remove. So again, if you use carbon paper, you're going to want to press very lightly to start, you know, test it and see, you know, um, how hard you need to press in order to make it transfer just right. Okay. <clears throat> so again, less is more. Uh, try not to overdo it. You're just trying to give yourself a guide. But likewise, you don't want a, a guide that's so weak that you have trouble seeing it. So, um, you know, do some tests and, and figure out what, you know, whatever you're using, how hard to press to get enough of an image, but not so much that um, you can't get rid of those lines later if you, if you, uh, if you need to. Okay. Uh, while I've got you here, you know, uh, masking tape, if you, you know, take a piece of this and, you know, put it on your shirt. I have to unroll. I have to roll down my shirt sleeve here. You know, you can put that on your clothes and pull it back off. Do that a couple of times. It won't be so sticky that it'll um, tear your paper. So uh, take off some of the stickum. Um, that way it'll come back off more easily later. Okay. Of course, blue painter's tape is a little more forgiving, but I would still put that on your jeans and a couple of times to remove some of that stickum. Uh, some of you may have frog tape, like the yellow frog tape is great. You don't even have to do anything to it. It's not going to tear your paper. Um, okay, so. I'm going to jump back here. Uh, essentially, on your handout, that's... What I'm talking about now is what's uh, right there in that diagram for you. So take a look at that, read it. Um, uh, I guess one thing that we really need to discuss is, do you have access to a printer? Um, if you don't, then um, you can A, either do this freehand, like look at the image on the screen and uh, mark off the area on your on your page and and freehand it. Um, some of you may know the grid technique where you could you could lay out a grid on your image on the screen and transfer that grid to the paper uh, and and do it that way. If you're going to try to freehand this, I highly recommend that when the, you, when you get to that step, you should blur the image in the image editing software to the point where it's very simple, right? cleaner, fewer shapes, uh, more distinct shapes. I would also recommend, if you're going to freehand this, that you find a close-up, right? Instead of smaller details like, like the image on your screen now, um, you know, shoot for larger images that fill up the screen a little more, right? Uh, 
like the um, you know, this version um, is a little simpler, right? Uh, not quite as uh, complex. So if you're going to freehand it, I would definitely go for something simpler and um, um, smoother shapes. Um, okay, so let's take a quick look at materials. Um, this is, again, overkill, but you could, um, you know, for backing board, Bristol board works great. Uh, canvas paper, if you've got access to some, or a small canvas, um, it, or even a larger canvas. If you're a painter, you have a larger canvas. If you have the means to project your digital image onto a larger canvas to transfer it that way, you can certainly do that. You just have to budget your time and make sure that you can accomplish uh, your goal and meet your deadlines. Uh, so, uh, I've got, you know, in that photograph, you know, we've got um, carbon paper um, or like here's a roll of transfer, artist transfer paper. Um, there's uh, the color wheel. Like you should have a color wheel and it should have a 10 step value scale on it. Uh, and so you would want to do something like, okay, I'm going to use... Um, you know, uh, value one, which is, you know, uh, black, uh, value three, which is a dark gray, value five, which is a medium gray, value eight, which is a light gray, and value 10, which is white. So um, you could, you know, uh, look at that color wheel to get those values as um, accurately as you can. Of course, if you don't have a color wheel, you would just look at your print and try to match it as closely as you can. Uh, and that's like, you know, again, testing your ability to see a value and mix that value in paint and then transfer it. Uh, so, um, like I mentioned, you know, having some tape, uh, having a range of pencils, it'd be good if you had some charcoal, like fine charcoal or a charcoal pencil. Uh, you could get, you know, if you've got a soft lead, like a 4B or a 6B pencil, that would work also. Uh, but if all else fails, a good old-fashioned number two, you can do this. It may be a little more challenging, but you can. And then a color pencil helps. Uh, you have to watch charcoal pencils and color pencils. Uh, pencil sharpeners tend to destroy them. Uh, if you've got a utility knife, it's usually better to sharpen those with a utility knife as opposed to a sharpener. Okay, uh, on, uh, you know, in terms of palettes, if you have um, like um, a, a liquid paint, right, a fluid paint, then you might consider, you know, getting your hands on one of these um, you know, weld palettes. Uh, they're like a dollar at the art store, but um, you don't have to have that. Uh, you could just have paper plates. Uh, actually, foam plates are better. Uh, and uh, so, uh, but, you know, even if you don't have foam plates, like sometimes groceries will come with a foam tray under it. Like some vegetables, some meat have a foam tray. You can wash those and use them as an artist. Um, uh, there, you know, I, I threw in, here's a, a simple wooden artist palette. Uh, you don't have to have one of those. You can just, you know, a piece of, uh, um, you know, wax paper will work. All right. So, um, and here's a range of brushes, right? Um, I'd recommend like having a half inch flat brush and maybe a quarter inch flat brush if you can get your hands on one. And then maybe a couple of small rounds, because uh, some of you are going to end up with images that have some detail in them, and you're going to want to have a smaller brush. So uh, a range of brushes really helps. Uh, and of course, black and white, uh, like acrylic paint. Uh, this is a heavy body, um, 
you know, uh, acrylic paint. Uh, some of you will have that in your kit. Uh, and of course, like cheap fluid, um, you know, acrylics will work, although they are cheap and harder to work with, harder to control. Um, so, um, my wife's telling me uh, something. She's sending me messages while I'm working. <laughs> so, uh, uh, hey, and here's a peanut butter jar. Um, and that um, has a little dish dish scrubber a plastic dish scrubber and the bottom of it that's great like fill that with water uh that dish scrubber gives your uh, brush something to um, uh, clean itself against right uh all right so um here's some close-ups right you got to have a backing board of some kind uh even good old-fashioned cardboard that's been painted white will work uh, watercolor paper, canvas, or canvas paper. Uh, you know, transferring the image, pencil, charcoal, tape, uh, a print, and either, again, charcoal on the back of the page or transfer paper or carbon paper will work. And then finally, the, the painting materials. Uh, I neglected to say, like, uh, here's some matte medium. That's the clear stuff that's already in acrylic paint. You can add some of that to your paint to condition it a bit, make it more brushable. Remember, um, you know, getting just enough water into your paint is going to be critical. So I would suggest that you have a scrap piece of Bristol board or whatever else you're using and test your technique out, right? Um, if it's too wet, it's going to really warp things and make things difficult to work with. If it's too dry, it's going to be difficult as well. So getting just the right mixture is important. Okay, and of course a palette knife helps you mix these things more thoroughly, more uh, successfully. Okay, so um, I'm going to jump over to um, uh, the interwebs again and I'm going to take you to archive.org. This is where you're going to find the files. Uh, in fact, the link that I give you in the instructions uh, will take you to the feature films uh, area of our, uh, the Internet Archive. Um, and like, you can choose like sci-fi or comedy or film noir. Uh, I would avoid silent films because they're so old that the quality is so grainy that you can't get a good image out of it, right? And in fact, anything before the 30s is probably not going to work out too well for you. Uh, you know, so those of you who are fans of Charlie Chaplin, sorry, he, you know, his films are too grainy to really work for this. Uh, but there's plenty of film noir and sci-fi uh, and, um, and, and others that you can take a look at uh, that are a little more modern, like say 30s uh, and up. I do want you to focus on black and white. I think if you're seeing a black and white film, it's easier for you to recognize a good value pattern. Uh, I'm not saying you can't use color, uh, like a color film. Um, but they don't always translate the way that you think they will. So I would suggest that you stick with black and white films. Uh, it'll make things a little easier for you in the long run. Okay, so let's say I jump over here to sci-fi, right? I was saddened to find that they had taken Plan 9 from Outer Space off the Internet Archive. Uh, but here's, uh, you know, a trailer from it. Uh, it's it's one of the worst films ever made, uh, and that's why I love it. Um, so, uh, but it, it's it's got um, um, some some pretty um, wonderful and um, um, insane uh, images in it, um, and so. What I want you to do is kind of scroll through. You can watch the film. You can scroll through it, kind of skim through it, looking for uh, an image that really grabs you, right? 
so uh, when you find that, um, well, in fact, I'm going to jump over here. Uh, here. Here's that film noir um, film, uh, film noir film that um, I was, um, you know, showing you a, you know, a student's version of earlier. Uh, like, let's say that I want to like focus on um, this woman in this moment, uh, you know, brandishing a gun and screaming uh, at the top of her lungs. Uh, I can, you know, take this to full screen, right? And I can capture this. Like if you're on a Windows machine, I think you hold down the Windows key and hit the print screen key and it saves it to your computer. You'll have to figure out where. Uh, just do a Google search for a screen capture on a Windows machine. On a Mac, it's Command, Shift, and the number four. Um, that gives you crosshairs and basically you can select the area that you want to capture and in this case it doesn't have to be the entire screen so i just took a screenshot of that on a mac it's saved as a png and put on the desktop that's where you'll find it okay so um entering full screen capturing the image i want you to do that for at least three images okay you're going to be responsible for turning in like showing me three uh saved as uh, jpeg or png okay so um once you've like got your shot you can take it into image editing editing software like pixlr or photoshop uh, i'm going to show you guys how to use pixlr Essentially, um, you know, here's my shot of Tor. It's a little dark. Um, I can um, adjust that. All right, let's see. With levels. And you can read about this in the handout, but essentially, I'm going to, you know, make a few of the darks a little bit darker. And this whole image was pretty dark, so I'm going to, I'm dragging the white slider over to brighten it up. I can also move this mid slider a bit if I feel like I need to bump things up. Okay, so essentially what I'm doing is intensifying the values, making sure that I've got enough highlights, enough shadows. Uh, there's a nice range here. Um, so you know, once I've got that done, I can um, apply it, go to the filter menu, and uh, from details, choose Gaussian blur. I'm really going to bump this up. Again, uh, if you want to simplify things, really high amounts on the Gaussian blur is going to help. It'll really simplify things and smooth things out. Uh, so it'll, it'll mean simpler shapes later. And then finally, uh, under the adjustment menu, you go to posterize. Now, the tricky thing about this is in um, Pixlr, you'd want to choose four colors. For some reason, uh, I want a, like a four color image. It gives me five in Pixlr. If you're in Photoshop, it'll be five. You'll choose five. But here in Pixlr, we're choosing four. I learned this the hard way. Uh, I chose five, and then it gave me six. So you have to really watch it. Make sure that you count the number of values when you're done. I, I wouldn't be opposed to you doing six, but it's just going to be more work for you, right? Uh, okay, so there's my image. Now, if I decide at any point this doesn't look very good, I can just back up, right, um, Command Z or Control Z will undo. Um, Command Shift Z will redo. But if, if I don't like what I end up with, I can back up and try different settings. I can blur it less or more. Uh, I can adjust the levels a little differently to give me, you know, a different range of values, etc. So once I'm done with that, I can save it. Oh, and one other thing that's really important, 
Under the image menu, you need to go to image size. It's probably the first thing you should do. And make sure that the image is the right size. And we're going to work at 1500 by 1200. Okay. 1500 by 1200 uh, will fit on a standard letter size piece of paper. It's essentially 8 by 10 uh, at 150 uh, DPI, which is a nice printable resolution. It'll print fine. Uh, it's a little larger than what we turn in, but this is what we need to make our print to transfer to our, uh, our, our backing board. Okay. So once you're done with that, you're going to go to the file menu and choose save, right? Save it to your desktop. You save it to your computer. Uh, you might try to print from Pixlr, but I've found that it doesn't always work out too well. Um, but if you choose save image, uh, choose JPEG for the file type, uh, do a high quality. There's a download button over here that you may not, there we go. And you, it essentially downloads to your computer. You go to your downloads folder. That's where you're going to find it. Open it up on any image editing program on your computer and make your print. Or save it and send it to somebody to make it, make a print of it. Um, I'm not requiring you to make a print of it, uh, but um, if you don't make a print, then you're going to be doing this freehand, which is a lot more challenging. Just keep that in mind. Okay. There you go. So, um, like I mentioned before, let me jump over here. Like here's our film noir, film fatale. Um, here's, um, the print traced to the Bristol board, right? All those shapes. And inside each one of these shapes, you know, you may want to like make a note to yourself. Oh yeah, this one's white. This one's light gray. This one's medium gray. Like if you need to, like, uh, where it gets really intricate, you can make a note for yourself, uh, as long as the paint will cover it. On the white areas, you might want to be careful because white won't cover uh, marks very well. So uh, I would leave the white ones empty, but maybe mark uh, light gray with a small light LG, uh, medium gray with M, uh, dark gray with D, uh, B for black, right? And then here's, you know, the painted version. Okay. Um, you know, do your best to mix the paint well, uh, apply it evenly. Uh, some of you, this is going to be a challenge. Others of you have been painting your whole lives and it's like a duck taking the water. Um, whichever one you are, like, put your best effort forward. If you're a painter of, you know, some practice, then, uh, I'll expect you to like, put your best foot forward and really, um, you know, make something um, beautiful. Uh, those of you who've not done a lot of painting, uh, I expect you to like um, slow down, take your time, keep your work area clean, keep your hands clean, watch your brushes, uh, experiment over on the side on a practice piece, right? Um, you'll get through it. Okay, and so now here's here's Tor, right? That original Here's the version where I've cleaned it up a bit. Let me move that over here. Here's the posterized image that was saved and printed. Here's the image traced to the panel, board, canvas, whatever. Uh, and then here's the painted version, right? So, um, that's it in a nutshell. That's what we're shooting for. Um, I'm uh, really excited to see what you guys come up with on this. Uh, this is always um, one of my favorite projects, uh, and my, my students tend to really take to it. So uh, go find uh, just the right image that has a nice composition, 
a range of values um, and um, make something beautiful and profound and learn something about composition and value in the process. Okay, good luck.